A close-up of an eyeball takes the full screen. It has a washed-out white and blue center and cloudy patterns across it. It blinks normally and frequently shifts its gaze. There is a feeling of instability. The screen goes dark. A white person with relatively short brown hair, some of it buzzed, wearing a long black tunic with long sleeves and a black backpack, stands with their hand on a door handle. They are visible from the back. Miss May, you can take off your bag and put it down on the floor just inside the door, please. The person opens the door, revealing a black swivel office chair in the center of a very small, nondescript room. Yeah, that's great. And once you put that down, please take a seat in the chair behind you. They sit. We never see the man who is speaking. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do is put a couple of contacts in your eyes, and we're going to use those to take a photo of your retinas. So if you could lean your head back and try not to blink. The screen fills with the person's eye. They blink. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. They just have to stay in long enough for us to take the photo. They blink again. It's okay. It's okay. Third time's a charm. The screen flashes white and then opens up to show the upper body of the person sitting in the chair. They tie it behind their head. Okay, can you see anything at all? No. Great. I'll turn out the lights and we can begin. The screen goes dark. There's a sense of movement in the dark screen and occasional splotches of gray. We are locked in a small, dark room. Honestly, it's more like a closet. Who am I in this space between sighted and blind? I wonder if I'll be the same. Try to lose myself in the ambiguity of the darkness. The person is revealed in near darkness. They sit uncomfortably. Sorry, I forgot to turn that off. Ah, uh, you're popular. Hardly. Of course, that never normally rings. The person fidgets. It's probably my parents. They knew I was coming here today, and I... I think they're a little concerned. Let me try to turn that off. The person leans toward the offstage voice. No, please, you're, you're going to have to stay put. I can't turn on the lights or we'll have to start over. Well, I could try to find it in the darkness. I might as well get used to it. No, please, please just stay put. We've got just a few more minutes. The person leans back. Want to hear a joke? Sure. How do you punish a blind professor? 
rearrange the furniture. <laughs> I bet you didn't see that coming. I guess you could say I was blindsided. Oh. How short-sighted of you. Now, now, don't give me the stink eye. Oh, I'm not. I'm staring daggers. Oh. Uh, well, I'll have to keep an eye out for them. Seeing is believing. Hey, even a blind pig finds a truffle now and again. The screen returns to darkness with slight cloudiness and a touch of movement. After I failed the how many fingers am I holding up test and the eye doctor had told me what he thought was going on. But before this moment here, waiting on the retinal specialist, I started researching. I am an academic after all. In one of my trips down a rabbit hole, I came across the following quotation from an American monthly magazine written in 1830. It said, the blind are the most unfortunate. They are condemned to a prison of clay, dark, helpless, and desolate. In the midst of a world which is full of light and glory and beauty of which I continually hear and after some conceptions of which their souls must pant in vain with all the sickening agony of unquenchable desire. Clay. It's an odd choice for the prison of blindness, if you think about it. Clay is multi-sensory. It comes from the very earth that supports us from the day we are born until the moment that we die, when it reclaims us for itself. Sure, clay can be turned into rigid structures with clear visual form, but we typically call those things like pottery or brick or ceramics. Clay is the word we use for the wet, malleable substance from which those other things are formed. A clay wall is sturdy, sure, but it's not impenetrable. Working with clay is a full body experience. I, I recall when I was studying physical theater at Del Arte, and we spent a lot of time exploring the physicality of what are known as the four elements, one of which is earth. We were coached to feel ourselves pushing against wet clay, leaning into all the resistance that it offered working, breathing, panting, panting, yes, but never in vain. Clay is visceral. I long to run again through the red clay pine forests of Alabama, inhaling the smell of the wet earth after a warm, steamy summer rain. The red clay left traces of me behind wherever I had been. Maybe that's why my advisor hated it so much. We had a conversation after I told him that I'd accepted a position at Auburn University. He told me he'd grown up unhappy in Alabama and for whatever reason, he associated that the red clay earth. He never told me what memories it brought up. Just 
how much he hated that land. I suspect they were planted deep. Deep, like the cotton picked by generations of enslaved people who were forced to labor in those red clay hills. You know, labor was the only thing white people valued from the people they enslaved. Following the Civil War, the ability to work independently was essentially required for anyone who wanted to achieve emancipation. Despite the 13th Amendment, those who were disabled and unable to withstand grueling physical labor were often left behind. I call to mind Hannah, who was blind, black, and enslaved. Freedom came to Hannah's plantation in Natchez County, but Hannah's disability meant that she was unable to follow and left to continue laboring in the garden and the home of those who were more than happy to profit off of her situation. Hannah's labor sustained them, while her disability provided all the justification that was needed, if any was, to continue her enslavement. After all, as a blind black woman, Hannah was presumed simply to be fortunate to have a place to live. I celebrate and honor Hannah because despite all of that, she survived. The person sits in the dimly lit room. Okay, we're almost done. So let me get the equipment ready before you remove the blindfold. Okay, are you ready for this? Do I have a choice? They remove their blindfold. Again, the screen is filled with an image of their hazel-colored eye looking upward. It goes white. 